Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Little Shop of Horrors. It's the 1986 remake of the original 1960s Roger Corman cult classic, which eventually became uh, a off-Broadway musical back in the 80s. They put this together into one film, and it works so well. <laughs> and it's directed by Frank Oz, who's also the puppeteer, had done some voices of Miss Piggy and Grover and all the rest. He's a fascinating director. And the music was by Alan Minkin and Howard Ashman, who went on to do other movies such as The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and so on. Until That is until Howard Ashman passed away in 1991. So Alan Minkin took the job to compose a lot of scores as the movies follow. Anyway, this movie stars Rick Moranis, Ellen Green, Steve Martin, John Candy, Vincent Gardenia, as well as Bill Murray, Christopher Guest, Tisha Campbell, and Tisha Arnold, both of them who went on to do Martin. Hard to believe. <laughs> anyway, this is of course the director's cut that just came out in 2012. This is a brand new set. And it's a very good set too because it's also a digibook that's on Blu-ray. And it features the original ending that they didn't put out in theaters because the test audience who actually saw this literally hated this ending. So they went ahead with having a clean cut ending that we're actually familiar with. For those who've seen the theatrical version, and I know I have too, because I've seen this on Select TV a long time ago, when Select TV was still around as a paid TV service, and and I got to watch all these movies along with many others. But anyway, this is the new cut. Eventually, now there, there's a story behind this cut. It was like back during the DVD days in the late 90s. Now, I have the original DVD right here, which has the original poster from 1986, which is right here. This is, of course, the, the re-release DVD that came out later, because they pulled this DVD off the shelf, and it's the one that says Special Edition on the bottom, and it has a sticker on there, too. So this is not the edition that I got. But I later surfaced a DVD copy of that, that has the original ending to that film that was cut. It was also referred to as the unhappy ending. And unfortunately that version was in black and white. It was in full screen. The sound quality was not the best on that one. And that was the only cut they had on the DVD before it was pulled off the shelves because the producer David Geffen was very upset about that because he know for sure that there was already a better copy out there but they never had a chance to find it until later so since then we had a hard time looking for this this version so until I finally stumbled it but this one of course was another version that was still on in the shelves but unfortunately this was the um, the second DVD that just came out um, after the other one was pulled so I've been having this uh, since 2005 when I first bought this at Suncoast for only $14.99. Not a bad price though, but it was worth it. So that was the story behind that. Um, but you know, it's good that I waited for the director's cut to come out because I wanted to see that director's cut for myself to see how good it looks in color and widescreen the way it was meant to be and it was awesome. I know the test audience hated that ending but you know what I don't give a crap. It was a good ending it didn't need to be cut but I was okay with the happy ending in the movie so you know it was no big deal but that's how I got. <laughs> that's more than what you pay for. <laughs> so anyway as the movie begins Seymour Cridborn who's played by Rick Moranis is a nerdy orphan working at Mishkits, a flower shop in the urban Skid Row. 
He happens to have a crush on a girl by the name of Audrey, who's played by Ellen Green, who happens to be the original Audrey from the from the Off Broadway musical. And he's berated by Mr. Mishnick's daily work, who's played by Vincent Gardenia. So one day, Seymour went to a, a different flower shop and he found a mysterious plant that eventually was identified and eventually calls this plant Audrey II. It's not like any other plant that he may have seen before, but it was a plant that actually has a mouth and it moves exactly like, like a monster. But unlike most plants who are basically craving for water, that's what they use to drink. On this plant, however, has a craving for blood and that's human blood that is so eventually Seymour had to feed his blood he had to make all these cuts in order to feed him so in order for him to grow a lot bigger than than you ever imagined somehow as weeks follow he eventually started growing and he starts to talk with a deep voice by the name of Levi Stubbs you know who's the lead singer of the Four Tops as the plant eventually started saying to Seymour feed me Seymour feed me so. uh, also in the movie Audrey had a demented but crazy dentist uh, boyfriend who was played by Steve Martin and he started abusing her really badly and also ordered her around that Seymour and the plant decided to have their revenge on killing the, the dentist. Well, he tries to kill him, but that failed because he already died. Once he was overhyped by the laughing gas, so Seymour had to chop him up and feed it to the plant, and he starts to grow even more until, until something bad starts to happen. Once Mr. Mushnik saw the whole thing until he gets eaten too. And it started to get much worse than that. And once he gets even more hungrier, so the plan was going to go after Audrey as well. So it's going to be a bigger problem because now Seymour himself has to face the plant on if he's going to take over, or at this rate, this rate he becomes the hero. So that's how the film goes. And for a remake, this was a very well-made movie. I love how they managed to had all the comedy elements they put in. It felt exactly like how the original film was, and I really enjoy that. And Rick Moranis was very good in that role. This was definitely the right role for this, as the nerdy orphan. And of course, Ellen Green, as beautiful as she is, I thought she was definitely stunning in that role that she did originally in the off-Broadway play. And she did a very good job here. It's definitely the kind of role I definitely remembered seeing when I was a kid. I'm glad she was chosen for that part, since she was the original in the, in the play. A lot of great casts in this movie, too. It also had a lot of great cameos in this film as well. They had John Candy as a radio DJ, and of course, as well as Christopher Guest as the customer, as well as James Belushi, who also offered uh, Seymour the plant. There was also another actor, too, um, by the name of Paul Dooley, who was the only who only appears in the director's cut version instead of James Belushi, and of course Bill Murray as a as a crazy but almost perverted dentist patient. I thought he was very good at this movie. He's supposed to play the role that uh, Jack Nicholson played originally in the 1960s version, so that was amazing to see that because that, in fact, believe it or not, folks, that's where Jack Nicholson got his start before. He wants to becoming a very well-known actor, as we know today. So, yeah. Because <laughs> he's always been sinister enough, uh, once you see him. But, uh, yeah. And also, it's good to see uh, Tisha Campbell and Tishna Arnold in, in this movie as well, as one of the backup singers. Because they went on to do the TV series Martin. So it's hard to believe that after this movie, they went on to, to do this TV show... Um, with Martin Lawrence, so yeah, hard to believe, guys. But then again, you know, Martin Lawrence had worked with Tisha Campbell since the movie House Party, the original House Party days. So everything was 
So it's actually cool that they got to work together as, as far as the film went. But, and yeah, it, the musical was so amazing. I, I love the songs they put in in this movie. It had an awesome soundtrack that written by Alan Minkin and Harwood Ashman. It was just spectacular. You just want to see it again and again. And I fell in love with this movie a lot. Ever since I saw this on TV, when it aired on Select TV for the first time, and I got to see it many times on VHS, before I got the DVD, and now the Blu-ray. So, I'm happy. It's a good movie, definitely worth recommending. In fact, if you love the original film, I suggest you should check this one out. You'll never regret this. So anyway, I give Little Shop of Horrors five stars. I'm Joseph A. Savora, and I'll see you later. Bye.